back with the darkness, frantically trying to get to their gig in Reading. They're already two and a half hours late, thanks to petrol in the diesel tank. And now they've got to negotiate the M4 with several thousand daily commuters. It's 6.30 and they've made it, thanks to this man with a van and what surely is a made-up name. My name is Germany Divine. I'm a... I'm from the States. I've been over in Ireland for three years. Got beat up over there. Moved over to London. With my beautiful girlfriend, Alex. Started a little band, so I bought a van. And uh, occasionally I get phone calls like this, a little emergency, see if you can help somebody out. So which I do for money, <laughs> as much money as I can get. The divine intervention cost the band a hundred quid, and they still have to unpack themselves. They're not happy. Sick of this <laughs> Most of the donkey work is done by us, you know. Normally we can get the Queen of Sheba to do our loading work, but uh, she had problems getting here in time, you know, there's been some really bad traffic, so we're hoping that she can come. You have to have people you can trust, you know, and uh, we've slowly tried to introduce new members of the team and today it's just come flying back in our face it's a big <laughs> up so uh, we won't we won't do that again we'll just do it all ourselves so i talked to tom oh, yeah. he had to go 23 miles east no <laughs> for the nearest carriage uh it'll catch up with us later and yeah he'll drive us back to london for the night yeah Hopefully we'll have his P45 drawn up by then. <laughs> Shame really, because we got on well with him. He was, uh, it, to me, he was as Paul Burrell was to Diana, you know, he's my rock. But sadly now, as I lay dead, he's seducing top celebrities. In a way, <laughs> well, metaphorically, that's what he's done by putting petrol in it. You know. Ha ha, you crazy guys! Anyway, now they're here, are they too late to sound check? Uh, they seem to be pretty relaxed upstairs, so yeah, you know, the other band is doing the sound check, so we should be able to do our sound check and everything. Seems okay. So yeah, not much, not much drama. So it's all worked out fine, and the day isn't turning out too bad after all. Shit. <laughs> There's no everything that can go wrong, will go wrong, of mice and men. Etc. Et it's all about grabbing the bull by the horns and not panicking. And yeah, we've been in the situation before, you know. If it had been our third or fourth gig or whatever, but this is probably our uh, more our thirtieth or fortieth gig, so it's cool. Time now is seven o'clock. <laughs> We're only three hours late. <laughs> yeah, one, two, one, two. Just putting one foot onto the tiny stage has triggered off Justin's dreams of a rock god future where he doesn't have to carry his own amp. I'm going to have, you know, my own PA who deals with wardrobe and shit like that as well. And there'll be three or four people underneath me before you even get to the band eventually. Ed the drummers having slightly more mundane dreams. I haven't got any money, so I was hoping to find loads of sandwiches in the dressing room, but there's nothing apart from bananas and crisps. So I've had two packets of crisps already. We're going to be given some money with which to eat. Are we? Yeah. Five pounds each, which is a large kebab. Thanks. With so little time to go before the doors open, everyone has to help out to get things set up for the quick sound check. For the dark news, uh, you know, I like to be part of it all. Yeah, it was just, you know, they're my friends and, you know, and I enjoy it being with them anyway. So, yeah, it's a good laugh. <laughs> It's not going well today. Frankie's bass amp has gone wrong now. This is the horror. I call it the horror. My amp. And uh, she screams. Play it. After a rummage and a poke around the back, Pedro works his magic. He's very good at this kind of thing. In fact, he has a 100% success rate so far with... Uh, Things of this, uh, we took him to the States and uh, whenever there was a problem, uh, 
rather than our method of just uh, hitting things very hard, here's another method using uh, tools and various pieces of electrical engineering and knowledge too, which he'd developed over the years. Uh, the bass amp, yeah, it was just um, the bias for the valves in the back were not set properly, so he was cutting off. Kind of, kind of gated sound when he plays quiet, he just plays really, really weird. And when he plays loud, it's kind of alright, but now he's fixed here. After a quick swig of his magic vocal potion, Justin's ready for the sound check. Just in case you're wondering, your bum does look big in those trousers. Seven fifteen. The sound checks over, and the guitars are taken up to the dressing room to be restrung. Tom, where is he? I think I think his um, his own conscience is beating beating him up enough room. He's unconscious. He's unconscious. He will be fucking unconscious in a minute. There are another two hours before the band go on, so there's nothing else to do but hang out in the dressing room. You get very bored find ways to amuse yourself. And that's when all the, all the uh, tomfoolery starts to happen. But not in my department, obviously. <laughs> can't even afford anything to eat, so we can't afford any drugs. No money, no drugs, just some surreal practical jokes with other bands like the Wild Hearts. They put bananas in our kettle, I think. I'm rock and roll with that. I'm going slices of ham in the... Uh, Wild Harris tissue box, when they went to get some tissues, they got slices of ham. And then um, I put uh, luncheon meat into the kettle, so when they boiled it, they have got the flavour of boiled meat. Which is probably like, actually, because they're Jordies. Nice guys, though. Nice guys. Does the band think Pedro is a better sound man than Tom is a driver? <laughs> He's the reason we sound good. As <laughs> simple as that. Over for ages, we were like, um, playing in venues without a sound guy. He's using in-house engineers and they don't have a clue. He knows how to push everything as loud as it will go. Yeah. And he also doesn't give a fuck as well. He doesn't care. Hence, you know, arriving three hours late for a sound check and still getting a sound check. It's 7.45 and the doors are open downstairs, the audience is coming in and Tom finally showed up with a fully functioning van thanks to a lot of help from a very talkative AA man. Uh, wasted two hours for the AA to arrive and then we went off <laughs> somewhere between Kent and Essex um, and uh, he told me all about a load of trivia about London and why Canning Town was called Canning Town and, and why, why Barking was called Barking and he was a very nice man but he, uh, he delved a little bit too deep into his trivia for my life. Duffin is about to go on stage. <laughs> Rock and roll. Uh, so I was just going to go and set up my the desk from the darkness and yeah. Bob the uncle, there you go. <laughs> Pedro and the band make their last minute tweaks and try to keep an eye on Tom, just in case he decides to fill the drum kit with paint stripper or plug a fire hose into the guitar. They literally can't afford any more mistakes because after they paid for the new van, it's petrol, the old van and it's petrol and diesel, this gig will have virtually earned them nothing. But there are no bad feelings and Tom gets to join in a big group hug before the band hits the stage. Just the time of my mind Been a chance to make it now 
over. So, was it worth all the frantic effort? It's, 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 uh, it's fucking wicked! <laughs> in the end, Tom didn't get the sack for putting petrol in the van, but two weeks later, while he was driving the van back from a gig in Liverpool, he let the van run out of petrol at 2am on the M6. Tom's no longer working for the darkness, 